Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth Kit build. Today I'm going to put together something from the movies. Well, movie projector anyway. This kit I've heard quite a bit of talk about, about it being a rather difficult kit to do with a lot of little bitty parts that you have to worry with. Well, it's a little concerning, but I'm up for the challenge. So let's open this up and see just how many little tiny parts there are. Movie film projector. We have instructions, we have more instructions, and we have two metal sheets. Set those aside, find the first page, piece of paper, we open this all the way up, there we go. Now this is two pieces of white paper, I'm almost willing to bet that when this movie projector first came out it had yellow instructions and I think this is probably a newer version. They've been going from the yellow instructions that they usually came with in the beginning, occasionally one sheet of white, to these larger two sheets of white that have a better detail to it. But, as usual, we have the, the title, the line drawing, section about insertion holes, fold lines, tabs, you know those pliers, the usual legend, blue circle means to bend tabs over 90 degrees, green triangle means to twist tabs 90 degrees to secure them, and then we have the two sheet layouts down here, if we find the associated sheets, there we go, we can then find out all the part numbers to find the parts to put this thing together. We slide over to page two, to the beginning of the assembly flowchart, and you see part one, part two, part three, part four, and these are, you know, assemble this, two of these, part two and three, that goes here, and probably here, number four and five assemble two times, here and here, so on and so forth. Follow the arrows, and get to the bottom, flip it over, Here's page three, follow the arrows. Here's page four, follow. When you're done with that, the next piece of paper we'll pick up with page five. We have page five on the second sheet of paper. Follow the arrows. Page six, follow the arrows. Flip it over. Page seven, and then page eight, and you're all done. Tools that I will use in this build. I have my standard set of tools. We have the long needle nose pliers. We have the flat nose pliers. Great for a multitude of bending and twisting and grabbing. We have clippers. I um, absolutely have to have clippers. It helps get the parts off the trees quite easily. I have a set of precision tweezers. with One with a very pointed end. One has had the pointed end ground down slightly. And a flat set. And I have a fairly standard set of tweezers that actually came in one of the Iconics kits that I bought. When it comes to shaping parts, I have an assortment of different things to use. I have dowel rods that I've used for quite some time. A couple of them have had the ends sharpened with a pencil sharpener, which are great for making cone shapes. I have an inexpensive drill bit set with a lot of different sized bits to help with forming cylinder shapes. I also have a couple of step mandrels. I'm not saying you need all of this, but these are different tools that I've acquired and I kind of go back and forth depending on the situation. Something else that's good for shaping. I've got some round nose or ring pliers that have rounded noses on the tip and you can use these to slowly curve different areas wherever you need to, irregular curves, back and forth. These are great for minor little detailed shaping. We have the metal sheets, the instructions, some tools to get us started. Let's put it together.
I found it much easier to attach the circular parts to the body of the camera than attach the top plate. It made it easier to fold over the tabs without warping or squishing the part. With part 8, I suggest not twisting the tabs on either side until you are sure that there is enough tab through each side. I spent a lot of time looking for the right size drill bits to use to shape the many round parts of this kit. It took some time. Getting parts 21 and 22 on straight took some doing. Watch carefully that you roll the end of part 23 the correct way. This video has been edited down. I've not shown all the different attempts, adjustments, or retries of this build. I also clip out parts where I am studying directions, searching for and clipping parts, and sometimes repetitive steps. It may make this kit look like it comes together easier than it did, but there are a lot of bending and adjusting of parts to make things fit. Work slowly, 
be patient, and take your time. The tabs on part 30 are supposed to be bent over, but that can be real tough to do without more support. I twisted a couple of tabs lightly to hold things in place until I can get more on. I intend to come back later when more is assembled, untwist and bend over those tabs. I bent the edges of part 44 close to where it closes, thinking that when I push the two sides together, the middle will likely bend more, thus keeping it round.
Ladies and gentlemen, the vintage movie projector. This was a fun build. I went into this kit knowing that there's a lot of round circular parts and it no longer intimidates me. I've been doing these kits long enough that that doesn't bother me. This did however turn out to be more challenging than I expected. I ended up actually having to build a second kit. The first one about halfway through there's a part that comes together funny and you have to leave it open and I accidentally bent backwards and to fix it it broke completely so that caused me to have to start over and do it a second time and I kind of touched on this in the, the video as I'm doing it these circular parts the instructions kind of make it look like you take the ring rounded part and the top flat part you put those together and then you attach that to the sides I did it differently. I made the circular ring parts, attached that to the side, twisted the tabs on the back, then put the flat piece on top of it and bent over because it was easier to hold on to things that way than to try and hold on to these little delicate rings with these big fingers of mine and not be able to bend very well. It's a very awesome looking kit. A lot of details. It's really neat to see an old fashioned projector put together this way. It was a lot of fun. It was challenging but a fun kind of challenging build. It took about two and a half hours to do it completely and that was with a uh, sort of trial run. So I had a little bit of practice getting halfway there so you know it may take you a little longer may not. I always try to go slowly to make sure I'm getting everything correct because I'm very prone to errors and I still make them. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.